So it's my pleasure to, in, to welcome our next speaker, Bernardo Cesari, who's going to be talking about the good old petrographic microscope and hopefully some Garnet's Metamorphic Studies Group favourite mineral. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to the organizers. I'm talking about the basics and the fundamentals for metamorphic petrology, in my opinion. And this talk is in collaboration with uh, Michael Schriebach, who actually invented the polychromatic polarization microscopy. Uh, well, we know quite well our common tool of observation, uh, the polarizing microscope, uh, which was invented, I believe, in 1830 and hasn't changed much to much uh, in uh, almost two centuries because we've added fancy electronics, but the optics are uh, were there from the beginning. Um, with our microscope, we have a problem, and the problem is uh, to be able to observe uh, in this window of retardance from zero to four hundred uh, nanometers. Uh, in practice. Uh, we cannot explore low barrier fringes materials. And if we want to do this, we have to make thick sections. So like in this example, it is, this is a birefringent garnet, a non-cubic garnet, but we can see that it is birefringent only when we make a thicker section. Uh, this is a major problem. We are used to it. We believe there's nothing to do with it. However, things may change, I believe because there is a, a new technique, polychromatic polarization microscopy. Uh, I will refer to it uh, as a PPM that was proposed a few years ago by Mikhail Schriebach uh, uh, for biological applications. Uh, with PPM, the microscope uh, is all, more, more or less the same as our polarizing microscope, but uh, there are these two polarization state generators, which are added to the polarizer and to the analyzer, uh, which are, uh, uh, can be quartz crystals cut normal to the C-axis, and which induce this uh, polychromatic polarization. Uh, let's remember that uh, such a microscope is not yet available uh, for uh, such a technique for uh, petrographic uh, microscopes. What do we see with PPM? Well, in this um, uh, part above, we see <clears throat> um, that uh, in this diatom, uh, we can see nothing with the cross polarizer, nothing adding the lambda plate, but if we use a PPM, uh, a colorful palette uh, uh, is produced. And even if uh, these particles have only five nanometers of retardation, we have uh, uh, colors in this uh, range of retardance. And the important thing, uh, which is different from our conventional microscope, is that the color, the hue, depends on the orientation of the slow axis of the mineral or of the material with respect to the zero direction of uh, the uh, polarizers. And this range of colors or this range of hues can be calibrated. And here you see how it has been calibrated. <clears throat> and finally, the thing that we want to remember is that uh, we are not looking at birefringents, but we are looking at orientation of, of particles and the birefringence affects the saturation and not the hue. This is a close up of this region where you see the uh, nice uh, match between the colors of these particles of the diatoms, which match precisely the colors that uh, uh, are expected when we rotate uh, uh, the orientation of the slow axis with respect to the zero orientation of uh, the um, polarizer. Well, uh, does it have any? Uh, importance uh, for geologists, uh, for the uh, geology? Well, it's all to be discovered, but I think uh, that the answer is yes, because uh, PPM allows to see colors in the petrographic dark, 
and is able to detect a very weak birefringences like in this small garnet. And I will give you some examples of from uh, <clears throat> the mineral that uh, I've been studying recently for its quasi isotropic behavior. And so we will look at uh, some tetragonal garnets. Uh, we will look at strain in uh, garnets from myelonites and uh, at the strain halos around inclusions so, and some other uh, minerals too. A uh, very important thing to remember is that uh, the images I'm going to show you are uh, come from glass covered regular 30 micron sections, not from thick sections. The first example comes from the tetragonal garnet, uh, garnets we have been studying recently. And if you have read this uh, paper, you may have uh, uh, seen that in order to reveal the birefringence of the slight birefringence uh, of these uh, mm, tetragonal garnets, we need to make uh, thick sections, in this case, 100 microns. And that uh, with a regular thickness, we do not see almost anything. Well, with PPM on the same garnet, uh, we are able to visualize nicely with different colors that uh, depend on different orientations of the uh, sectors of this uh, uh, garnet, we are able to visualize this uh, sector zoning in areas where the cross polarization would uh, give us black colors. After this first experiment, uh, we <clears throat> uh, took a look at other garnets which might have, uh, might show again some uh, birefringence even not recorded uh, uh, not recorded before. And so I asked uh, Renee Tambling and Martin Hand, uh, one of their garnets, uh, oh, oh, sorry, one of their samples from this study in JMG, uh, because <clears throat> the garnet that they had been uh, showing had uh, the calcium content uh, uh, that is grossular in between 25 and 30% and very low pyrope that I would expect uh, as uh, compositions that would show um, non-cubic uh, behavior. Uh, these are the compositions uh, in red that I would expect, uh, I, we have measured to be uh, tetragonal and other uh, examples falling in this range, uh, I would ex expect them to be non-cubic. So this is the, 100 uh, thin section from uh, uh, Rene Tamblin's uh, sample. And you see that at such a thickness uh, with the conventional petrography, we can see that there are uh, hints of uh, birefringence of non-cubicity, but this is the image that we find uh, <clears throat> at uh, 30 microns uh, and with uh, its uh, spectacular sector zoning. Uh, more on that garnet, uh, if we take two uh, images with PPM uh, with polarizers rotated of 90 degrees, we can get a differential PPM image, which is much sharper and much more detailed and not only shows us the sector zoning, but also this muttered pat pattern that we have seen before in other garnets. And we found the same patterns also in an eclogite from the tower window that uh, Claire uh, kindly provided us. Uh, you do not find the sector zoning in these garnets, but if you take a look in detail here uh, with PPM and then by differential PPM, you see that uh, <clears throat> there is an extensive muscle pattern that clearly shows that the garnet is an isotropic and with the two distinct orientations uh, in the different zones of garnet. If we go to uh, crystal plasticity in garnet, uh, we can take a look at uh, these uh, um, crystals from uh, uh, myelonites in the Musgrave ranges and uh, which have, are uh, supposed to uh, have suffered, uh, undergone, sorry, crystal plastic uh, uh, behavior. And uh, with the PPM in a, two millimeters garnet, we see extensive, uh, um, <clears throat> extensive strain related by refringence. And also in the areas among fractures where you would expect a little uh, deformation, you see again 
the classical model pattern that uh, it tells us that there has been more crystal plasticity in this garnet. And you can understand that with such a technique and with such an image, we can locate the targets for future EBSD or FIB or atom probe analysis much, much better than with conventional polarized uh, petrography. Now, let's move to birefringence halos around inclusions. You know that uh, this is a quite on, uh, a topic uh, quite on fashion because uh, uh, it comes from uh, the behavior of the host inclusion system when they undergo cooling and decompression. And the host, the garnet in this case, is strained by, uh, by the inclusion. Here we have a zircon and another, another zircon from Doramaira, and here we have amphibos included in garnet from Alperami. And you see how well PPM visualizes the this birefringence halos at a thick thickness, I remind you, of just 30 microns, much, much better than cross polarization. And the other thing important is that uh, the hue changes continuously around the inclusion, which means that uh, the orientation of the optical axis in the host garnet changes continuously. Still from uh, uh, inclusions in garnet, uh, we see that uh, unlike uh, in the conventional images, uh, we can trace and uh, see the parallelism uh, of uh, colored fringes, colored halos, and they are parallel. The green color is parallel in all inclusions in this garnet, and the purple color is parallel in all the inclusions in this garnet. This suggests that there is a lattice control on the development of, of halos. And in addition, you can see that the extent of these halos is greater than the commonly thought of three inclusion radii. So much, much better visualization. That's 13 yes. minutes. Yes. Uh, you can do something on pleasure place and lose sight, and we can get to the conclusions that the polychromatic polarization microscopy, which is not magic but optics, allows detailed visualization of microstructures and can reveal, can reveal low birefringence in minerals due to growth or strain or whatever you think and can do many many other things uh, but we just need to think about them. Um, unfortunately PPM is not available on, on mineralogical microscopes uh, and I hope that in a couple of years uh, it will. If you found this interesting please send me an email uh, with uh, this subject. And uh, I thank you, apologies for the uh, <laughs> delay and see you at EMC 2021. Thanks. Fantastic, thank you, Bernardo. You did a great um, advertisement job for your, <laughs> for the microscope. There's some beautiful, beautiful images there. And yeah, combining with EBSD, I imagine would be really, really interesting. Yeah. Of course, this is, you know, this is just the beginning. Uh, and so um, I think that any, any of you who have seen now what this can do can think of what uh, are the potential uses of this technique. So yeah, what, how are we gonna get this into a normal microscope? What, what uh, needs to happen? We're gonna push for it with the Rich Taylor. <laughs> Rich Taylor, are you out there? We want this, it looks amazing. Thank <laughs> you.